Hello, my name is Mark from JazzGuitarLessons.net and welcome to the vlog for May 28th, 2018. So I'm going to get a little bit more time to do this now that we've uh, finished the album, the record CD launch. Well, there's no CD, but actually launch concert. Uh, so today I want to answer a question by either it was a visitor or a YouTube commenter on singing your lines. Uh, it's a big thing. You hear George Benson do it. Sometimes people watch my videos and they see a lesson where I start to improvise and go, -a 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 -a, you know, do my thing. Uh, and I want to answer this uh, in an intricate fashion. So first I want to give you two or three things you can work on. And later, much later in the video, I'm going to tell you how, what happened for me. In fact, what were the four, what were the four steps so I could get, um, I could get to sing my lines and what I've been through. And basically the theme of today's video is do what I say, don't, don't do what I do, okay? But first a word from our sponsor. This video here is brought to you by Banzoogle. Banzoogle makes it easy for musicians to create really beautiful website that work. You can sell your merch, you can sell your albums, your MP3, CDs, etc. You can have your event calendar, blog, bio, pictures, etc. Uh, you can head over to uh, my website, my personal website, marcandreseguin.com, no dash, no no capitals, and it took me about 18 minutes to build this entire website. Uh, for the record, this is where the new album, it's called Second Chances by yours truly, has been hosted. And uh, Banzoogle is, uh, their slogan is websites by musicians for musicians, really user-friendly. Uh, so head over there right now. If you're interested in Banzoogle, you can use the coupon code JAZZGUITAR. This is just for subscribers of JazzGuitarLessons.net and you can get 15% off your first year. Of course, the first 30 days are free. So check this out. And speaking of the devil, we released this Second Chances album. We're Monday now. It was, it's Memorial Day in the US, by the way. Happy Memorial Day. We had this Friday gig, which was a lot of fun, and it was filmed and everything. So it means I'm going to ha have a little more time now to send the studio and do these vlogs, answer these questions, publish these lessons. Back to, back on topic. And let me take a little sip of coffee. I'm as tired as ever. So good. Uh, this is not a sponsor, but um, Cliffhanger Espresso by uh, Canadian coffee company uh, Kicking Horse. I guess they're in British Columbia. They're on the West Coast. Great coffee. Um, maybe I should ask them to sponsor me after all. So let's dig into this topic of singing your lines. So I know we're three minutes in the video. I didn't say anything. Uh, I have, a f I've seen the future and I see people comment and say, just shut up and play your guitar. So this is not a guitar video. So I apologize. If you want to put the comment here and you think I wasted your time, fine. Uh, if not, stick around. <clears throat> First thing I would recommend if you're serious about getting into singing your lines is using your voices, your voice for other purposes as soon as possible. You listen to music in the car, you listen to good jazz recordings, uh, I like Wayne Shorter and Miles Davis and John Coltrane. So sing along to the melodies. It doesn't mean you have to sing the full solos and everything, but just having an idea that your voice works and can approximate the pitches is a really good first step. And then of course it goes without saying, once you get good at that, you can take simple pieces of solo. I'm thinking uh, Chet Baker or Miles Davis on So What and things like that that you can try and sing. And this is away from the guitar. You want to, to convince yourself that your voice works. Doesn't mean you'll be a frontman in a rock band. Doesn't mean you'll be a diva like Céline, Céline Dion, Québécoise. Uh, but you, you can really learn a thing to, to be confident with, with your, your own voice. It goes without saying, so sing themes and melodies and solos and then sing so, uh, what, solos uh, as a second part. The faster it gets, the harder it is to articulate. But it's really difficult. So start simple with really easy thing. Next step, once you convince yourself you can just sing, you can start to sing and play by using your guitar and singing along to the, the melodies, the themes of standards, for instance, just standards that you're working on. And I'm not even talking about like, you know, strumming chords and singing a Gard Brooks song. I'm talking about playing Autumn Leaves, you know, these sorts of things to convince yourself you can be lyrical. You could even start by doing it with just your voice and then you do Blue Bossa, right? 
grab your guitar and see if you can those two can match. Now for a little interlude in in my suggestions, so to recap, you know, sing themes and melodies, sing solos, then sing the theme to a standard you're practicing, then grab your guitar and try to match it. This thing of singing your lines is extremely difficult and it's really demanding on your nervous system. Here's an analogy. Uh, sometimes you've seen the jazzguitarlessons.net videos where, where I, I have this teleprompter thing. So the text is going, you can't see it, but I see it. So what I do is I speak and read at the same time. Uh, it's pretty difficult, but you get used to it to the point where it just looks like you're talking. You need to master the language, of course. So you need to master the language and the rhythms of jazz to be able to do that. Another analogy would be, what if you're talking and you're writing at the same time? You, I mean, you don't have to write on a piece of paper what you're talking, but you can make the sentences appear in your head and see the words and the syntax and the uh, commas and, and things like that. So you're doing two things at once. So singing your lines or playing what you sing or singing what you play. Sometimes we don't know which, which is it, uh, you know, the egg or the chicken. We don't know. Uh, it's as demanding on your nervous system as talking and reading at the same time for, for instance. Uh, so, be kind to yourself because it's really difficult. Now I'm going to give you a tip. I'm going to grab the guitar and give you something I got from the book Forward Motion. Uh, I talk about this book extensively on the website and I also talk, uh, it was on, uh, I guess, some of uh, other videos. So there's one exercise towards the end. It's probably in the latest chapters. He says, it's called getting it in your ears, getting forward motion in your ears or something. And the point is, this is not singing related, but it can give you an idea of how um, you can train your ears to better be with you and to better guide you while you play lines. I guess that's always been the purpose for you if you want to sing your lines is to convince yourself that you're really hearing what you're playing and you, you know sound doesn't start from the fingers, it really starts inside you and then this is just a tool to get it out there. So here goes the exercise. You will play a line of the C major scale and you're going to play it in half notes. So one, two, three, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. But this is pretty easy, right? But the point is, this is the structure you have to con constantly hear in your mind while you're going to do the rest of the exercise. Those are the pillars, the really big pillars, your half notes. So once again, this, this C major scale and half notes. We're going to add pickup lines, meaning that we will, uh, in French, we say anacruz. We're going to add one note prior to the first note and the second note, etc. So in this case, we're going to do, this is our target, the C is on beat one. We're going to play an eight note pickup from D. So one, two, three, four. Same for the other notes. This guy is buzzing so bad. Sorry, guys. And the point here is, well, this is Mark. This is easy. I can play this exercise like in my sleep. I know. But the point is, what you hear in your mind as these things go is only the pillars, only the half notes of the C major scale. So you hear, uh, sorry, three... So what I was singing is actually what's going on through my mind. Now it's pretty easy. Let's add two notes instead of we're going to go E, D, C, right? A one, two, three. The only thing that was, go was going on in my mind is that target, that half note target. And last step, right, a one, two, three. So it's almost as if you, your ears start to intuit what is coming next. And what's coming next is you hear the landing tone before it happens. Now we, we're only doing this so you separate you hear, oh, we hear an eighth note ahead. Now we hear, oh, we hear two eighth notes ahead. Now we hear three eighth notes ahead. So it's like driving on the highway where you look further ahead. 
So you kind of stretch out your ear's ability to hear further. Of course, you can do this um, if you want to descend the scale. I would do... Uh, you know, organize your pickups, but still that half note line you have, uh, to, to quote the author, says you will have to scream that in your head. You have to hear it so loud that the person next to you is hearing it too, but it's only happening in your mind. Uh, so this is a great, great, great exercise to, to, get, um, to get closer to, to singing your lines. And I guess this is how it happened for me. So I know we're ten, 10 minutes into the video and this is the, the tips I can give you. Uh, for those of you who want to stay tuned, I'm going to put the guitar down and I'm going to relate to tell you my personal anecdote uh, relating to how I got into singing my lines. And we're back. Of course, I took a sip of water and dripped some on my shirt. That's how goofy and tired I am. Uh, so to tell you my personal story and that don't do what I do, do what I say, uh, there were there are basically four steps in my life that I could really trace back to go, oh, this, this is when I started to sing my lines. <laughs> Before that, this is when I really wanted to learn how to sing my lines. Uh, this is when I couldn't stop singing my lines. And lastly, this is, oh, now singing lines or playing what you sing or singing what you play is a tool amongst other tools. So let's get started. Uh, let's go back almost 15 years now. I went to university in Montreal and I had a f fabulous, magnificent improv teacher. It was an improv class where we had uh, lectures, but we also had combos, like little bands where we'd practice songs and concepts. Uh, teacher's name, Charles Ellison, look him up. I'm not the only guy that got steamed rolled, steamrolled by Charles, and he would just show us these things and play with us and it would be fantastic. So Charles told everyone in the group often, very, every class, that if you don't have an instrument in your mouth, you don't play trumpet or sax or trombone or whatnot, uh, you should be singing your lines. So he looked at guitarists, because we were many, many guitarists in that room, and a few piano players, you guys, and even the drummers, you guys, you should be singing all the time, because this is where it's coming from. Knowing that this guy's a trumpet player at first, it's pretty clear, because trumpet players have to approximate those pitches in their head before they come out. So it's only natural that that's what he was telling us. Uh, there's a certain lyricism to trumpet that I really love and uh, that in some way it's so, it's so close to guitar the way trumpet players phrase. In any case, that's how it started. So there was, there goes the first year where I'm, <laughs> I, I love this, this idiom so much, banging my head against the wall. I would take time every week, so probably 10 or 15 minutes and go, you know what, I'm going to play super simple blues and improvise lines and sing it at the same time. You know, be, my voice and my playing has to be aligned uh, because Charles says so. And I would fail miser miserably every week and it got really, really frustrating. But I kept trying because, you know, that's what the teacher said. I would start lines like, uh, and then... <laughs> three or four bars later, as soon as I got into playing a part of a scale or an arpeggio or going down or going faster, I would totally lose and my voice and playing would go like this. And I would either stop playing or just keep improvising. Going, ah, the heck with my voice. I just, I have this idea I'm following now on my, with my fingers. Um, I, I did that for the better part of a year, of a school year. And then when summer got uh, in town, Montreal, beautiful summer, in fact, it's this, this time of year now, maybe early, uh, late May, early June. I, school was out and we had so much time to practice. That was my, my wish, like, I can't wait until school is finished so I can you know, finally practice and don't have to do all these assignments and, and whatnot. So I started to practice a lot, a lot, a lot. And I abandoned the idea of, um, of this whole idea of having to sing what you play, play and sing, etc because I didn't have classes with Charles and so meh, you know. And all of a sudden, um, probably there was a year in between those two events, so that would be my second step. My second step was, I was at a jam session, things got really, really hectic. Uh, drum was loud, bass was doing something, and there was some so many things happening that I needed a moment to focus and to reset. And I remember I played something high up on the fretboard and I didn't quite know what I was doing. And my voice came out to confirm what I wanted to hear. 
And this happened automatically. This totally happened. Um, and then I, saw, I sang the rest of the solo that I was improvising to my own surprise. I was totally, I was, I was like, well, uh, okay, I guess I, I do this now. You know, it just, it, the, the switch went on. And my friends were impressed or surprised or they found this funny that I was screaming lines at the top of my lungs while simultaneously playing them. I didn't grab a microphone or anything, but I was just doing it. So this is how it happens, uh, to tell you the truth. So that's why I'm saying, you know, do what I say, don't do what I do, because it just, it sort of happened by accident. I tried a lot, then I totally let go, and it started to happen, um, uh, I guess, about a year later. H however, you know, in the middle, I was practicing a lot. I was playing gigs. I was rehearsing, teaching. I was doing these studies uh, in university. So this, this, this is how it happens. Now, for the curious people that are still sticking around after 15 minutes, um, the third step was I was completely stuck singing my lines. And this was kind of bad because I started to do it for YouTube, for my lessons videos, and I started to do it even when it was inappropriate or that people in the audience could hear me or people could hear me and sometimes I'm bitchy. Um, <laughs> so I was at a point in my life where it was probably two or three years that I couldn't help it. It was two rats, like jazz two rats. You you can't you can't stop. It's just this is what it is. So I was at a certain point trying to you know get rid of that bad habit because I'm like wow it's not really helping me. Plus I don't know if I'm actually playing what I'm hearing and singing or if I'm just by habit singing what my fingers are doing. If lines are starting from my fingers, like what's the use of, in singing them? And all of a sudden um, it was not like it was not s such an incident that oh I stopped. Uh, altogether, but I got more confident in the music. I got more relaxed. I did meditation. I did the I did the effortless mastery thing, the Kenny Werner thing, and I got more confident and more relaxed and try to stay in a zone that I wouldn't get um, say I would get excited while I, I was soloing in a good way. But being excited, being the moment, means your shoulder go like this. You go like this, and you start screaming, and you kind of lose track of time and space. So I said, no, no. Let me stay in that zone where I don't hurt my shoulders and where I, you know, I keep I keep my head up and I look at other musicians and I'm really in the moment instead of closing down because there's so many things happen. So I was able to tame it and to control it and just to say, okay, now I want to sing when I play. Now I don't, you know. And that was the third step. And now the fourth step, which is kind of interesting because we played on Friday. Now we're Monday and. I noticed that what I do now is I use singing the lines that I'm playing, I use it as a tool. And as a tool, I mean, if I'm composing a new song or if I'm playing a standard and I'm, say, building a chord melody around it and I, I'm not sure what I'm hearing, I will just go ahead and sing it. Because this is, it, it, it's a great tool for confirming what's happening in your head. Uh, although people say, you know, Pat Mettini would say, oh, I'm a bad singer, so I don't do it, but I hear it. I really trust he does. I really trust that, that he does. Uh, but I like to use my voice as a tool. I've heard anecdotes of Lenny Bro doing the same thing. Just, you know, what's that chord? And just singing notes and going, okay, I now hear it, right? So when we played on Friday, I noticed that in uh, either when I was nervous and feeling not so connected and centered, I would start to sing lines and I have video and I saw the footage. It's like, okay, now at this point I had aligned a line that finished in a way that I didn't really like. I started a new line and I I was puzzled as to what direction this whole solo was taking and I started to sing to um to cradle my <laughs> cradle my ego back to this is alright, you're actually hearing what you're what you're um what you're singing. So that's that's a step. That's really where I recommend you be you you don't have to go through hell and back like I did, but to consider singing and playing a tool. And to me now, as a professional musician, I don't consider uh, singing and play, playing any superior. Uh, it's not a, uh, a rite of passage. I don't think it is, uh, because I think people exaggerate to some extent what, what is possible, what, what should be done, what should, should not be done. If it gels with you, do it, work on it, it's cool. Uh, if you can use it as a tool, it's cool. Uh, it's not cool when you you can't get rid of it and you're constantly singing lines screaming on your gigs that's not so cool 
So that's my two cents. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going, I'm going to attempt to make more of those in the next future, in the near future, because we, in the next future, we have released the Second Chances album. So my time is a little freer now. I was out of town for this. So once again, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing, but improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. I will see you soon on the website and please subscribe to this YouTube channel for more free lessons. Take care.